Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back from the brand new video. Today's video, we are finally here with the old league prediction Oni Oni Ons and that's just exciting to say that because now we're actually sitting here doing the league predictions, it means the real football's back. Now none of this English football, any of this nonsense, no 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 no, the real football's almost back. And it's time to predict it. Now, usually we'd actually look to last year's video and see how I got on with my prediction on and on and on, how many I got right, how many I got wrong, and it usually just turns into a big laughing face at how terrible I am at doing this. But because of everything that happened last season and the fact we weren't able to play all 38 games, it makes it sort of irrelevant and makes it completely pointless to go back and check because we'll never ever know where teams would have finished. So that means we just get to dive right into this year's league predictions, which will probably be as bad as they were last season. But starting off at the 12th spot, the team that I think will be relegated are none other than St. Johnson. Now I know some people might be surprised that I'm putting St. Johnson there, but for me it was actually the easiest one to pick out the entire 12. And the main reason that they are rock bottom of the league is the one that you may have heard me say before, no Tommy Wright. No, St. Johnson. Because when it's all said and done, I'm expecting them to be rock bottom in the league. And that right there will just be the final little indication and almost a further highlight of how good of a job Tommy Wright done at his time in St. Johnson. I think that togetherness and the belief that no matter when things were going right, because I'm not sitting here saying everything was perfect under Tommy Wright. They went through bad spells, but the belief that they had and the togetherness they had under Tommy Wright, just that stability, I think is gone now. And when things do get bad, like they usually do every season for St. Johnson, I didn't see the recovery without Tommy Wright being there to lead it. And that is why the 12th for me. Next up we move to the living spot on the old table and it's going to be a team that's just always, always doing their fighting and scrapping and always flirting with relegation but always seem to get away for being bottom of the league. Now in case you don't know who I'm referring to with that, I am of course talking about Hamo and who I think will be in and amongst it once again. Yes, they have got good players like Okunpo who I think will stop them from being rock bottom of the league because that is a talented player in there. He has a handful and he's perfectly suited to our game. He also has Miller as another very, very dangerous attacker. And I think having them two there will just scrape by and just give them enough points once again when it's all said and done to just jump up for that bottom spot that they'll probably spend the majority of the season in. But you know what's going to happen. Seven games to go. They're going to win the next five of them and just jump above them. That is honestly what I think. And I think that experience and having won those battles to stop them from being rock bottom has toughened these players. They know when it's going game time. And I think that experience right there will be vital to keep them from being 12. But I don't think they're good enough to jump up any higher than that. So I think they will be sitting in that playoff spot. Over to the 10th spot. It's actually going to be a team that I backed to do pretty well last season. For the majority of it, they certainly did just start resting on their home forum and playing to their strengths, which is the two goal scorers up top. Now, I know the wheels sort of came off at key points during last season and it looked like they were really, really struggling, but they'd done just enough and they'd done enough damage in the first half of the season to set them safe. And I think they're going to do the exact same thing again. Now, I'm of course referring to Ross County and I think Big Stewart up top for them is going to be massive for them. But also, I think we're going to see a resurgent Billy McKay in this one. Because a lot of people was expecting, like me, I was expecting him to do bits last season. and never quite worked out. But now everyone's focused their, their attention on Stewart. I think this is now when Billy McKay is going to start rattling goals in. And I think that's going to be vital for Ross County survival this season. And that is why I think they will finish in the top 10. Now we turn our attention to ninth in the table. And this is where it started to get difficult for me. Because I think the first three sort of picked themselves. But right now is where it's a bit of a coin toss between the next couple of places. But even in saying it is a coin toss, I'm still going to go with the team that I'm always drawn to. When I look at ninth, there's one team that always comes to my mind, and it's St Mirren. Now, if you watched the SPFL show last year, you'd have heard me talk up St Mirren, because they went through a sort of transitional season where they were getting away from the, the negative style football and trying to get the ball doing and play some football against everyone apart from Rangers and Celtic. Of course. But against everyone else, they got the ball doing and they tried to play. And you can see they have got a couple of key players, especially their big man up top. Big Obey, as we call him lovingly on the SPFL show. He is a handful and I think he is going to have another big season 
up top. But I think Kyle McGuinness as well is another one that's very, very exciting for St Mirren. If he can stay fit, if he can stay healthy, he can be a game changer for them. Now defensively, I still think they are very, very shaky. And despite the addition to Jan Anik, the former Rangers goalkeeper, of course, I still think defensively is where they're going to be lacking all season long. I think that's where they're going to lose a lot of games because of their slackness in defence and I think that is why I am drawn to them in knife. Yes, they are getting the ball and yes, they are trying to play and yes, they have got a couple of key players that can win you a game but that defence to me, I think will cause them a lot of problems and that is why I have them sitting in ninth. On to number eight we go and this is where I'm going to surprise a lot of people. If you thought me putting St Johnson at 12 was a wee bit weird, this is where you're going to jump off and just say, alright CJ, everyone's talking this team up, what? Are you talking about, son? And yes, I am very well aware a lot of people are talking Kilmana Cup, but I honestly think they are still going to be around this bit struggling from when Stevie Clark left them, and I think they will be sitting eighth when it's all said and done. Now, I know they've signed some interesting players, but I think the big fullback is going to be a massive, massive loss to them, and I just think their play style under Dyer, despite I'm working with Stevie Clark and it's returning to what done them so well this season under Stevie Clark, it's no quite at that level, to me, it's absolutely putrid to watch. It's so negative, and I think that negative style football is going to cost them a lot of points as the season goes on. I think it is going to frustrate the attacking players like Brophy, who is a pretty damn good player, especially in this league, and he can hurt teams. And the fact that you can't just rely on Chris Burke to always be the man to create chances. It's almost like they're so defensive, they kick it to Burke and they expect him to do it all. And I just think it's going to continue to be undone this season. I think under Dyer, they're not going to pick up enough wins when it matters. I see a lot of draws coming from Kamarnock this season, and that is why I have them. Where they're at. So we're now at 7th place and I think this has a lot to do with what I just said about Kilmarnock when I talked about the putrid play style that they have and they're so damn negative, I think that's going to negatively affect them. Well, it's the exact opposite with 7th spot and the team that I'm picking to just miss out in the top 6 is going to be Dundee. United and anyone who knows anything about me and who's ever watched this channel before, you'll know I absolutely hate sitting here and saying that, but their attacking style and the way they'll go after teams and the fact that they've got a natural goal scorer, I think is going to pick them up a hell of a lot of points in this league. There's annoyingly a real togetherness at the side, I know a lot of people are saying they're just promoted, they'll struggle, but they say the exact same thing about Livingston and we saw how that went when they were such a tight-knit group and they protected their home at the Tony Macaroni, well I think Dundee United will unfortunately do a hell of a lot of that this season, and I know we just mentioned them, but under there with a the natural goal scorer, with Shanklin on their books, this is a guy now that has been on the radar for a very long time, but has constantly had to read people say he's no good enough, he's never proven himself at that level, so now he's at this level, he's got a team and teammates that believe in him and want him to succeed, I think he's going to be playing with a real chip on his shoulder, and I think there's going to be a lot of goals for him and on the United. Feel sick. But to sixth place we go then because I need to cleanse the old palate, ladies and gentlemen. And now just making it to the top six but just missing out on a higher finish, I think, will be Livingston Football Club, the Tony Macaroni Madmen. And it's weird because I have a love-hate relationship with Livingston in terms of these league predictions because the first season they came up, everyone was pounding them to go down. Everyone was saying how terrible, there's no strength in tier, but I predicted them to do pretty solidly in the league and just be comfortable in where they finished and that's exactly what happened absolutely nailed the first season the second season after Kelly Hawkett and Dolly Menga was loaned out I went they're going to struggle all season long I think I think they've lost too many big players and I actually predicted them a finish bottom didn't they quite nail the second season hence the love hate relationship but this season coming into the third season I think I'm going to get it back to winning ways and I see them finishing six because I look at their team now right they have that tremendous home record, they've got Bartley in the middle of the park, you know what you get for him, he is their captain, he will run through a brick wall for them, and you've got the big boy up top who has and will continue to score goals at this level, Dykes is a very, very talented player and they play straight to his strengths, having a forward who can score and play into their strengths, always going to create your goals ladies and gentlemen, and amongst the sticks now they have one of our boys over there who I am very, very keen to see have a very, very good season. I'm, of course, talking about Robbie McCrory, who is still young. He's not the finished article, who will make the occasional mistake, but I think he's going to be a massive player for them all year long. So, as I take everyone into consideration, their home form, excellent, big players and big positions, 
and a goal scorer, I think they are going to have a good season. If they can tidy up their away form and start picking up points like they did at home, then they can jump up the league. But it is that sharp contrast between home and away for Livingston, and that is why I'm going to sit them at the bottom of the top six and slap them right in there. Now, just missing out in the top four and some European places in fifth spot, I am going to pick the only Edinburgh club in the top flight of Scottish football. And sorry to the Hearts fans who might be watching, but he's took enough points off us last season. I can be here damn happy and celebrate. We won't be dropping points at Tynecastle anymore. Nah, 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 nah. The only team we need to worry about from Edinburgh this season is going to be Hibs, and I'm sitting them in fifth because I think they are going to have a very good season. Under Jack Ross, it may not be what a lot of people's predicting. I know they are in love with how Jack Ross plays, and they look at the players and say, "Oh, he's bright, he's bright." Hibs are going to be right up there, challenging in the top four. But for me, I think they're still going to miss out, and I still think they're missing a couple of key players. One of them being Greg Doherty, by the way, because I think they need a Greg Doherty type in the middle of the park to make other flair and attacking players work. They need that guy who can just run all day, just back, 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 and he'll do all the dirty work for you. And because as I've, I'm currently going to this video, he isn't at that football team. I think fifth is where they'll end up. I'm expecting Scott Allen to have another very good season. And sorry for swearing on the channel and saying the guy's name, but he has got a wee bit of football on him. And as that team continues to be built around him, I'm seeing his influence spreading more this season. I think he's going to be, have a very, very good season. You've got Deutsch up top as well, who I'm sure will be slapping goals in for fun. But I, I don't think they've got enough steel in the middle of the park to take points off the teams in and around them, and I think that's going to help them as the season goes on. And I think something else that will help them as the season goes on, by the way, is the lack of an Edinburgh derby, because that can just get the players riled up. Like the week before, at the, leak at the week after, it may be on a high from winning a derby. But without that spark there, without that thing to get them up and buzzing, you know how we feel whenever it's old fun week, without that... I think that is going to slightly hurt their killer instinct as the season goes on and they eventually fall to fifth in the league. And with that being said, we move to some European places, ladies and gentlemen, and up at fourth spot. Despite everything in my head screaming, Mullerwell is playing in Europe for the first time in AGCJ. They're going to get knocked out and that's going to negatively affect their season and they won't be as good as they were last year. Despite that voice screaming at me that, even as I'm currently recording, Today's video, I'm still going to go against the grain in my own mind, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put Aberdeen in fourth. And one of the main reasons I'm putting Aberdeen in fourth instead of third is I just feel like their killer instinct now is slipping away now as well. You look at where they are under Derek McInnes. Are the fans happy that he's still in charge? Do they think he's took them as far as they can go? Does he think he's took them as far as they go? And that seeps into the players as well. I think so. And I think that's just going to affect them when it matters the most. When push comes to shove, when it's crunch time versus Muller, I think they're going to lose that battle. And that battle all season, I think it's going to be vitally important to this spot. Because again, I'm picking this team at third and fourth and fifth and sixth. But I'm expecting minimum points between all three of them, if I'm being brutally honest, ladies and gentlemen. So I think the head-to-head, -head, I think Mullerwell is going to beat over Aberdeen. And I think that is why they're going to slip down to fourth. And that leads us to third, which you already know who's going to be here. And it is going to be Mullerwell Football Club, which I'm sure Gogsy is absolutely delighted. But I'm sure he's doing backflips in the comments right now. But honestly... I look at their team, I look at their recruitment during the summer as well, picking up Lamy, who again is a very established defender in this league. He's done very well for Livingston, a part of their fantastic home defence. He was always a mainstay in that side. I think that right there is very, very clever recruitment and he's going to slot right into that first team and make them better. I know they lost Gillespie, but bringing in Carson, I think, is another bit of good recruitment. And also, we're talking about David Turnbull as well, being back fully fit and able to go and show why he deserves a move elsewhere. And I'm sure he'll be coming into the season with a point to prove, because everyone was talking about him at this point last year. Now, though, everyone's saying, how's he going to be after the injury? And I'm expecting him to have a very, very good season alongside his best pal, Mr. Jake Hasty on loan from us. And everything I just said about Turnbull with a point to prove, Jake Hasty will have that not only to us, Rangers fans, who's going to be keeping an eye on him, but to the Mullerwell fans who aren't exactly delighted that he's signed back. He has got to hit the ground running to just survive over there. And I'm pretty sure with the slight glimpses we saw versus Rangers, he looks like one of their best attacking threats. I think he's going to have a very good comeback season now that he's back playing week in, week out. And as you know, we love to talk about strikers right here on the channel. If you look at their depth and the rotation that they can have with Chris Long, Jordan White and 
Tony Watt, there's a couple goals in there as well, mostly from Jordan and Chris. Maybe sort of a hit of Tony's, Tony Watt's arse and go in, but there is at least striking options there, and they can change things if it isn't working. And now, after that journey through the SPFL, now it is time to reveal who is number two, which in turn will reveal who I'm picking at number one. Can you guess? Now, Celtic is, of course, going to be placed in second place. Shock horror, ladies and gentlemen. And as we mentioned earlier on today's video, we know what happened last season with the way it played out, right? We'll never, ever know how it would have finished. Hello, Leeds Football Club. Hello, Watford. Hello, Championship Bottom 3. So on and so forth. But I'm honestly not want to sit here and waste any more time talking about that in today's video. Let's look ahead to this season. And the reason I'm sitting them in the second spot in the league, despite them looking absolutely fantastic post-January where they slap teams left, right and centre. The one of many reasons that I am picking them in second place is going to be, as I look at this Celtic team as I'm currently recording today's video, I think it's weaker than last season. I mean, look at the transfer policy with the money they apparently have to spend. They've not exactly flung it about ladies and gentlemen. I don't think they're any stronger than they were last season. As I said, I think they are weaker and the weaker point comes from their goalkeeper, Big Frankenstein Foster. He isn't here as I'm currently recording today's video and it doesn't sound like he is coming back up the road to Celtic. Now, despite us all unanimously hating every single one of their players, I think we can admit he is a very, very good goalkeeper and won them a hell of a lot of points in the league. Hell, he won them a cup based on his performance. With him not being there, I'm seeing that as a massive, massive hole in this Celtic team. And again, you hear all the time they've got all this money and they plan to spash it. And again, if they go ahead and do that after you've seen today's video, I mean, I, I can't predict the future, ladies and gentlemen. As good as I am, which isn't very good, I don't have magical power. So all I can do is look at the Celtic team. I don't think they're any stronger. So I think it's still going to be extremely tight. And I'm expecting a lot of twists and turns, point dropped here, silly teams pulling in front here all that malarkey, but when push comes to shove, if all 38 games are played, I think they are going to finish just behind Rangers. And speaking of Rangers, that perfectly transitions us to talk about why I'm predicting Rangers to win the league. And it's not because of these blue tinted specs that I wear 24-7, it's not just because of them. Where I think Celtic stalled in the market so far, I think Rangers have tightened up and increased the quality of their team. First up by permanently signing Hadji with, now with a pre-season in him, we're seeing how good he looks, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is a massive, massive upgrade. And with the ability to bring him in, it's now freeing up Ryan Kent, so we're not just locking him out. And when teams are focusing on Kent, on Hadji, who does that open the door up for? Joe Rebo, who now has a more advanced attacking position and I think them three right there has goals in them and that is what's been lacking from this Rangers team is midfield goals. You look at them, it spells goals. And that right there I think is going to take a massive burden off the striking role at this football club and off the shoulders of Alfredo Morelos because we've seen how we've played over the last couple of years. There's no goals in our team apart from Morelos. That's pretty much where all our goals come from unless it's one of our fullbacks, but the way we're branching out and expanding and improving as a team now, it's not just reliant on a striker, and that is why despite everything that's happening with Morelos right now, whether he's staying, whether he's going, despite me thinking he still will eventually leave this football club, whether it is the day, the morrow, or some point during the next week or two, I still think he will leave, but that doesn't wreck my league prediction, because to me it's no Morelos or bust. For Rangers, if Morelos does leave, yes, we are losing a very, very talented player now, but that gives us the opportunity and chance to bring someone in who maybe fits the play style better now than under the current players and the interchanging and switching we now have. Because we've seen Morelos be frustrated that he isn't the out-and-out -out focal point of our attack. If he does leave for a lot of money, that gives us a chance to bring in someone who will fit that role, and that could open the door and again, share the goals out now, which I think we'd be desperately missing now over the last couple of campaigns. But I, I could sit here all day and talk about it, ladies and gentlemen, but I think you've heard enough for me today. That is my league prediction. On the on the on, do you agree, do you disagree? Make sure you're getting your thoughts and opinions and your league tables down there in the comment section below because if all 38 games are played, we will come back at this point next season and see if any of you guys 
absolutely nail it. So aye, get involved, it's always fun, it's always a bit of a laugh, ladies and gentlemen. What's your 12? Make sure to be letting me know. But with all that being said, I'm officially done and dusted with today's video. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.